Hello guys, welcome again. This is Mr. Allen for April the 9th. We're still going over atomic theory. Now I wanted to really go into some more details on elementary substances and compounds. So I, I broke down two groups here. I want to remember, or I want to go over again, what a elementary substance is. A elementary substance is one atom. So we don't have to concentrate too much on what these atoms are or what these compounds mean for now. All we really want to know is when you look on the periodic table, which has all the elements, you can determine if it's one atom. Well, I guess the periodic table only has atoms. But if you look on a um, atomic formula, you can determine if it's a compound or a elementary substance. So elementary substance means that there's just one atom in there. So hydrogen, helium, iron. So iron would be one atom. Oxygen would be one atom. Um, helium would be one atom. Hydrogen. These are all, they only have one atom. So the two ways to determine a elementary substance or meaning it just has one atom there are two things it will either have one letter one capital letter like hydrogen or oxygen it's just one capital letter or it will have two letters the first one being a capital and the second one being a common or a big letter and a small letter so whenever you're trying to determine i wonder if this is a elementary substance it will have the maximum of two letters because it would be the capital and a small letter so elementary substances or atoms they are either going to have the one capital or a big letter or it's going to have a capital and a common letter so a good example would be iron the capital and the small we know that this is just one atom which is iron PD, you see the capital letter and the small letter, so we know that this is just one atom. FR, capital and small, so we're not really breaking down what that atom is yet. We just want you to know that you can differentiate them. So elementary substance, it's only either going to be one capital letter or a capital and a common letter. So that's a good way to figure out if it's an elementary substance or it's just one atom. Now, compounds, compounds are where there are more than one atom. So it's going to have two capital letters minimum because every time you have a capital letter, it's going to be one atom. So if I have, let's say I have H and O, we know that these are two capital letters right here. So we know that this capital letter is going to be one atom by itself. And then this capital letter is going to be an atom by itself. So if it was a capital and a small, then we could say that this is one atom. But because it's two capitals, we know that this by itself is an atom. And this by itself is an atom. And they're um, reacting together to make a compound. So compound is going to be two or more atoms. To differentiate that, it's going to have more than one capital letter. So. A good example would be MgO. We have the M and then the small g. So we know that this is one atom right here, magnesium. And then we have the capital O, which is oxygen. So we know that this is two atoms right here. Right here we have Na, Br. So the A is common and the R is common. So Na, we know that this is one atom right here. And then capital D, small r, we know that this is another atom. So this is two atoms right here. M, G, and O, we know that this is one and this is one. So this is two atoms right here. So again, elementary substance, I'll write this down for you. It's going to have either one capital letter, meaning it's just one atom, or it's going to have a capital and a common letter, which is still just one atom. Compounds, a good way to differentiate them, they have at least two capital letters. So whenever you see the M, G, and O, you see the M and the O are capital. So you know M, G is one atom, O is another atom. So at this time, what I want you guys to do for the compounds between one 
and 10, I want you to tell me each how many atoms are in here. For each one, I want you to tell me how many atoms are in each one. And I'm going to pause it. I want you, well, I'm not going to pause it, but I want you to pause the video, write down compounds between one and two. So I'll give a hint. So number one, we have Na, so we know that's one atom. We have Br, we know that's one atom. So number one has two atoms in all. So I just gave you number one, but I want you to pause it. You're gonna go through, tell me how many atoms each have, write them down on a piece of paper, and I'm assuming you're doing the right thing, and we're back, you just pause the video. So, number one, I already went through NABR, so we know that this is two separate atoms, so number one, we should have two atoms. Number two, MgO, we know that magnesium is one, O is one, so we know that you have two different atoms here. The definition of a compound is two or more atoms. So no, that's a compound. LIBR, you don't know what LIBR is. You don't need to know for now. All you need to know is that LI is one atom. BR is one. That's two atoms right there. FRO, you know, FR, the capital and the common, that's going to be one atom. And then the O is oxygen, which is one atom by itself. Number five, we have capital H. Capital F, small r. We know hydrogen by itself is one atom, and then FR is one atom. Number six, capital H, capital O. We know that's two atoms. H is one, O is one. And then number seven, H E P D. We see the E is common, so we know that's helium is one atom, and then P D is one atom by itself, which is palladium, I believe. Palladium, yeah. Uh, PD is palladium. Number eight, we have ZN and then H. ZN, now the N is common, so we know ZN is one atom. H is another atom, so we know that's two. Number nine, FEO. We see F, the E is common, so we know FE is one atom. And then O is one atom by itself, so we have iron and oxygen, two atoms. And then lastly, SIC, we know SI is one atom, and then C by itself is another, and Si is silicon, and C by itself is diamond, I believe. Yeah, C by itself is diamond, and yeah, silicon carbide. So, all of these are two atoms by themselves. A compound can have more than two atoms. If I wanted, I could put NaBrHO, and then we would be able to say it's still a compound because it needs two or more. So elementary substance is one, compound is two. So what I want you to do for the try, you have 10 questions. What I want you to do is tell me, you're gonna put one, two, three, four, all the way to 10. You're gonna say number one is elementary substance or compound. You're gonna put either or, and then you're gonna go all the way to 10 and tell me what your answer is. I am going to, Again, assume you're doing the right thing, pause the video, get a pen and paper, write down the answers. You need the practice for IXL, so pause video. All right, we're back. You guys did the right thing, pause the video. You're only hurting yourself if you don't. Now, number one, ZN. The C is capital, the N is common. We know that that is a elementary substance, uh, PD. Uh, palladium, the P is capital, the D is common, so we know that is, even though it's two letters, the second letter is common, so it is a elementary substance or just one atom. Number three, B, C, I, three. So we know that the B is capital and the C is capital. The I, that's actually B, C, L, and then the L is common. So we know that it's B is one atom, and then CL is another atom. So this is two. The definition of compound is two or more. So we know that number three is a compound. Number four, FeO. We know that Fe is iron, which is one atom, and then O is oxygen, which is another atom. So we know that that is two atoms, which is a compound. 
Number five, L I B R. L I is one atom. B R is one atom, so we know that's two. So number five is a compound. Number six is F R O. We know that F R because the R is common or small. We know that F R is one atom by itself. And then O is another, that's two atoms. Now here, number seven, we have capital H, capital C, and capital I. So we can actually say that is three atoms there. H, C, and I, there's three different atoms, so that would be a compound. Uh, number eight, R, capital R, common B. What do you say that is? We know one is capital, one is common. That would be A, elementary substance. Uh, number nine, we have capital R, common B, and then capital I. So no RB is one atom. And then I by itself is another, which is a compound. And lastly, number 10, we have C by itself, which is diamond. The, and C by itself is just one letter or one atom. So number 10 would be elementary substance. Now, for this one, I'm going to make it a little bit different. What I actually want you to do, I'm going to stay out of the shot, is I want you to write down between one and five, and you're, I want you to put two different groups. You're going to put elementary, elementary substance and then compound, and you're going to see which, which ones are on the elementary and which ones are on the compound. So for number one, you'd have elementary substance compound, and then you put the ones that are there for elementary substance, and then the ones that are there for compound. So I'll give an example. Let's say number one were these three. This is number one, and I had elementary substance and compound. I would drag Zn up to elementary substance because I know it's two letters, but the N is common, so it's still just one atom. I drag this to elementary. Number two is PD. The D is small or common, and then the P is large or capital. So I know I would drag this to elementary substance. And then number three, I have BCL. So the B is capital, so I know that's one. And then the C is capital, so I know this is two different atoms. The L is common, so this is one atom here. This is one atom here. So I would drag this as two atoms to compound. So I'm going to do the same thing for here. You're going to write elementary substance, compound, and then for each one, you're going to write which is elementary and which is compound. So uh, remember, if I'm going too fast, pause the video, rewind it, and yeah, uh, we're going to pause it now. You're going to do one to 10. I'm going to get out of the way. And all right, so we're back. Remember, um, this is really going to help if you actually pause it and try yourself. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot difficult or a lot more difficult when you go on IXL. So number one, we need which ones would go on the elementary substance. Would I be correct if I said, I believe R, B, I, and Z, N would go on the elementary substance, and then C and PD would go on the compound. Would I be correct? No, I would be incorrect. It would be C, which is the, um, the thing for diamond. This is the atom for diamond. C would be elementary substance, because it's just one letter. ZN, because it's a capital and a common. I know that would be still elementary substance because it's just one atom. RBI, RB is one atom, but I is another one. So this is two. So this will go in the compound. And then PD, capital P, small d. I know that it is one atom, so that will go here. So it's elementary, elementary, compound, elementary. All right, number two. I say that HCI and FEO 
would go under compound. And then C and PD would go under elementary substance. Would I be correct? Yes, I would be correct. H is one atom, C is one atom, and I, all three letters are capital, so I know that this is three separate atoms that are combined together to make a compound, so that would be here, FeO, Fe is iron, that's an elementary substance, and O is an elementary, but they're both of them together, so I know that would be a compound, and then this is one by itself, elementary substance, PD by itself, elementary substance. Number three, I say that ZN and MG would go under compound, and then CR and GA would go under elementary substance. Would I be correct? No, I would be incorrect. The, this is one atom, so it would go under there. MG is one atom. To go under here, CR is one atom, to go under here, and they're all one because of the common letter or small letter, and then GA is one atom, so all of these would be an elementary substance. Now, number four, we have K, SR, Y, and HS. Hmm. I say K and SR, would I be correct if I say K and SR would be compounds and then Y and HS would be elementary substance. Would I be correct? No, I would be incorrect. Um, it's actually the same as number three. One atom, one atom, one atom, one atom. So all of these are elementary substances. And then lastly, number five, C M B E S I C and then C M B. I say S I C and C M B would go under compounds, and then C M and B E would be elementary substance. Would I be correct? Yes, I would be correct. C M is one atom. Oops, elementary substance. BE is one atom, elementary substance. SIC, we have the capital S and small i, so we know this is one atom. But we have a C as well, which is capital, so we know this is two atoms. That will go on a compound. And then C and B, this is one atom here. This is another atom by itself, compound. So again, I want you really to understand that we're not necessarily trying to understand what each name represents, we'll go on in the long run. All I want you to really understand is if you look on a piece of paper with the, the formula for these atoms, you can say, all right, well, that's an elementary substance. I mean, it just has uh, one atom in here, if you see Fe. But if you see LIBR, you can say, all right, that's a capital L, common I. We know that's one atom. But the B is capital and the R is B is capital and R is common. So we know that's another atom. So that would be a compound because it is two or more atoms. So if we see something like this, HCI, we know that that's one atom, that's one atom, and that's another one because they're all capital. So this is three atoms right here that are combined together, which would make it a compound. All right. So I feel like I've beaten, uh, I guess I'm saying, I feel like I've really broken that down or repeated a lot to explain that. If you have any questions, you know, pause the video, replay it. But again, all you're really trying to figure out is looking at it and then determining, all right, based on the common and capital letters, this is just one atom or this is more than one atom. That's basically all we're trying to break out. So pause it. Do the work, write it down again. If you're a little bit confused, I may have gone quick. So, you know, pause it, rewind, and they really break it down. And then on IXL, I'll go through the lesson, see who, um, see what the grades are, and then see like who understands, who needs some more help. But definitely pause and then go through it again. Um, that's all for today. And thank you. You guys have a great day.